Spectrum just launched Spectrum One, where Spectrum Internet, advanced Wi-Fi, and unlimited mobile come together to keep you seamlessly connected wherever you are. Why did you switch? Because Spectrum Internet delivers the fastest download speeds in the nation. And the advanced Wi-Fi has enhanced security and privacy features that automatically block online threats. How reliable is Spectrum Mobile? It's a super reliable service coast to coast. Switch to Spectrum One and get internet for $49.99 a month. Plus free advanced Wi-Fi and one free line of unlimited mobile. Call 1-833-861-4999. Take your day from good to great with Perkins Great Plates under $10. Get big flavor and even bigger savings with our Magnificent 7 breakfast. Big Bacon BLT, Short Stack, and more. All for under $10. And don't forget a delicious pie from our bakery. Save time and order online at PerkinsToGo.com. Straight ahead, off the job in the middle of a route. We'll have new details on a Tomahawk bus driver quitting. Plus, more room to play for snowmobilers. We'll learn about hundreds of trails opening up tomorrow. And a local tribe is helping the environment through donations. We'll have the details as your local news starts right now. News Watch 12 with Dan Hagen, Jessica Jukic, and Conrad Sapinski. Good evening and welcome to News Watch 12 at 5. I'm Dan Hagen. And I'm Jessica Jukic. After school on Wednesday, some Tomahawk students boarded a bus to be taken home. But that's not what happened at first. Instead, the driver drove to Tomahawk Bus Services and quit. That's according to the Tomahawk Police Chief, Al Evans. He told WJFW that during the bus route, the driver became frustrated with the kids she was taking home. The driver then drove to Tomahawk Bus Services without dropping them off. Another driver later took over to finish the route the previous driver abandoned. Chief Elvins also told WJFW that there have been a lot of rumors going around on social media, including that the bus driver pushed a student off the bus, but Chief Elvins says that he did not see any evidence of that when he watched the video. No arrests have been made at this time. A newly released study shows the housing shortage in Wisconsin will likely get worse over the next decade. It's due to a growing retired population staying in their homes and the recent slowdown in home construction. The study by Forward Analytics says the state needs to build at least 140,000 housing units to keep up with those entering adulthood. Director Dale Knapp says it's going to be about working around the construction slowdown the state has seen due to labor and supply shortages. That there is a big concern that mortgage rates remain high um, and, and essentially we lose, you know, a, a year or two or maybe even three of, you know, a significant um, building and really putting us behind. Knapp added that in the decade prior, about 150,000 homes were built, so the 140,000 goal is doable. It was announced today that the Wisconsin Emergency Rental Assistance Program will close applications at the end of the month due to low remaining funds. Since launching in 2021, WIRA has paid out over $240 million in benefits to support more than 38,000 Wisconsin households with rent, utilities, water, and internet payments. Benefits will be will stay as long as the funds are available, with priority given to households facing imminent eviction. Housing stability services will continue even after those rental benefit funds are gone. It's a cool day out there. The snow stopped. What's in store for us this weekend? Yeah, finally the snow has stopped. Now we're going to be in a dry weather pattern, so get ready for that. You enjoyed the snow, Dan? Well, I was going to say, good thing we have a good base now mm -hmm. with this dry pattern. Mm -hmm. We have plenty to work with. Yeah, I know you're a big skier. I love snowmobiling. I love skiing. So this is perfect conditions for any outdoor sports activities. Taking a look outside right now, we do have some cloudy skies, but no precipitation falling from the sky at the moment. Uh, we do just have some lingering uh, lighter snow shower closer to Green Bay. I wouldn't even consider those snow showers more like flurries just south of Green Bay. In general, that low pressure system, it is long gone. Now in the northeast, it's actually starting to move offshore now. So it is going to be in the past uh, very shortly. Temperatures, though, are well below freezing. So all that snow and ice is sticking around. Everything is iced up and it is very slick out there. So be careful outside if you're walking or maybe driving the weekends pretty much right around the corner. So get ready for that. Temperatures are hovering 
hovering around 20 degrees right now. They're going to continue to cool off tonight as we do have some breaks in the clouds. Winds are starting to calm down. We did have some breezy winds earlier today, but now winds start to calm down. Temperatures are going to start to cool off into the overnight hours. We're actually going to be hovering in those low to mid teens. Dan? Thanks, Conrad. Around eight inches of snow fell in Marathon County, and it was enough to open nearly all the snowmobile trails. Zones 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6 will open tomorrow at 8 a.m. Zone 3, which is in the Weston and Cronin Wetter area, will have a partial opening, and pretty much all of those zones will have a partial opening. Go to the county's Recreation Department website for more details on that. Marathon County is the largest county in the state with 28 snowmobile clubs and over 700 miles of trails. The Vilas County Recreation Supervisor sent out a stern warning today to snowmobilers in the area. Stop off trail riding or the trails will close. The rec department is reminding riders that going off trail in the county, state or national forest is prohibited. Emergency departments are cutting back on opioid prescriptions. That's according to a report from the CDC showing that opioid prescriptions given in emergency departments dropped to about 8% between 2019 and 2020. That's down from a rate of 12% between 2017 and 2018. Opioid prescriptions have been on the national decline since they reached a peak in 2012. Studies show people who receive opioid prescriptions during emergency department visits are at risk for developing long-term use. Overdose deaths have reached record levels in recent years in the U.S. The Wisconsin DNR have ended their investigation of the illegal sale of hundreds of invasive crayfish into the state. The investigation was launched in 2019 after a resident reported a red swamp crayfish for sale in a Milwaukee pet store. The distributor responsible for the crayfish, Apet Inc., had been previously notified by the DNR of Wisconsin's invasive species law. Although these species are native to the southern U.S., they are not native to the northern U.S., including Wisconsin, and are illegal to possess in Wisconsin. Apet Inc. was found to have delivered hundreds of invasive crayfish to Wisconsin customers for over two years. Law enforcement have since charged Apet and issued 147 citation convictions. A local tribe is furthering their mission of a better environment through a nearly $100,000 donation. Sakagan Chairman Robert Van Zyl Jr. and the rest of the tribal council welcomed representatives from the 15 organizations to Mole Lake to accept the donation. The partnership created over the years has helped fund projects such as installing buoys and ropes at swimming beaches, providing public education at boat landings, and funding fish restocking in lakes. These are donations from our um, gaming compact from um, from the state and this relationship that we have with the state, the counties, the cities, the municipalities. The tribe says the common goal of clean lake water helps create a better environment for everyone. The Big Sand Lake Property Owners Association has received funds from the tribe for the last three years and they hope to continue the collaboration more of a partnership with the with the Sakagan um, to kind of take care of the mutual interests we both have in the lake as far as the health of the lake the fisheries Museal says they will use the funds to help educate boaters about aquatic invasive species to help stop the spread the Eagle River Revitalization Program's mission is to improve business environment and enhance the quality of life. In efforts for their hard work recently, they received an award for helping out the community. Newswatch tells Mohammed Abdul Kawi joins us live in the studio to tell us more. Mohammed. That's right, Dan and Jessica. The program recently received the 2022 Business of the Year. Even though this award is a huge milestone for the program, there's still a lot of work to be done in the city of Eagle River. It's a great honor to be able to showcase them, and they meet all of the criteria, and we're so glad to have them. Since 2012, every year, chamber members get selected for the Business of the Year Award. In 2022, the Eagle River Revitalization Program won. What it does is it showcases businesses and gives them credit for all the hard work that they do. City Administrator Robin Ginner noticed all the hard work the program does for Eagle River, so she nominated them for this award. Karen has, has gotten a lot of compliments from our city council and they've been just so uh, happy with how she is 
doing great work here in the city and pushing pro projects forward. Have you ever won an award like this, like this magnitude? No. <laughs> so it's very exciting. Karen Margolowski takes pride in trying to make the city better, a mission that resonates with others. It really is in um, appreciation of all of the volunteers that are in our organization. We have youth, we have um, veteran, we have new volunteers. Um, so it's really exciting to see them all get honored with the award as well. While there may be a new plaque in the office, Margolowski says there is still work to be done in Eagle River. I love getting feedback from people and our board is very excited to move forward and, and create our work plans and strategic plans on ways that we can um, revitalize the city. Margot Lossi told me that the Eagle River Revitalization Program has a lot of exciting things happening for the city this year, including the Artscape Program and Rotary Square Project. Dan? Thanks, Mohammed. A tech giant is cutting thousands of jobs. We'll explain why Google is downsizing. And the World Championship Snowmobile Derby in Eagle River is underway. We'll have the details after weather with Conrad. Furniture and Appliance Mart's $14 million sell-off is happening now. Millions of dollars worth of product arrived late to our warehouse and must be sold. Save as much as 85% off while it lasts. Plus, get 60-month special financing store-wide at Furniture and Appliance Mart. The local water experts at Culligan can take care of... Everything but the kitchen sink. Actually, we do that, too. Culligan, here for every water worry. Oh, that spin class was brutal. Well, you can try using the Buick's massaging seat. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Can I use Apple CarPlay to put some music on? Sure. It's wireless. What's your Buick's Wi-Fi password? It's uh, Buick Envision. That's a really tight spot. I used to hate parallel parking. Me, too. The Buick Envision, built around you, all of you. Get 3.9% APR and no monthly payments for 90 days on Buick SUV models. Visit your North Central Wisconsin Buick dealer. New set, new look, News Watch 12. Our team works around the clock to bring you the news that matters most of all to the North Woods. We are committed to the community and ensuring that you are as informed as possible. NBC News Watch 12. News from where you live. Now get an Escape, Edge, or Explorer SUV with 0% APR financing for 36 months, only at your Wisconsin and UP4 dealers. Furniture and Appliance Mart's $14 million sell-off is happening now. Millions of dollars worth of product arrived late and must be sold. Whirlpool Microwaves now just $1.99. Amana Washer and Dryer Pairs now just $9.99. Happening now at Furniture and Appliance Mart. This portion of News Watch 12 is brought to you by Slumberland. And welcome back, everyone. Behind me is a shot from Minocqua. Look how pretty calm it is out there Friday night. We've got some people walking around. Thankfully, they are safe. They are not falling left and right, as conditions are definitely dangerous. There is a lot of ice, a lot of snow on the ground, so please take extra precautions and slow down. We do have around 16 inches of snow on the ground, just shy of a foot and a half, so you snowmobilers are loving the snow. The trails are looking really nice. Uh, they're going to get groomed up this weekend. And then into next week, they're going to be looking really nice, especially with all those temperatures well below freezing. And, of course, a lot less snow in southern Wisconsin. Right now, though, we do have some cloudy skies. No precipitation is falling from the sky, though. So, hey, that is a good sign for us. The roads and sidewalks might not be in the best shape right now. But we do not have any additional snow on the way. So you could put away those shovels for at least the next couple of days the next several days, let's say that. So right now across America, we're pretty clear uh, that low pressure system is in the northeast right now. Middle of the country looking pretty clear. A couple of clouds lingering in Wisconsin. Same thing in the Twin Cities. The west, though, they've been very active. They've been getting rounds after rounds of storms. Look what's happening now. Nothing. California seeing lots of sunshine. They are finally in the clear. They had weeks of just nonstop rain and snow coming in. 
rounds after rounds. Now everything is starting to calm down and we are all pretty much in a good dry weather pattern. The next couple of days will be dry. We'll have a couple of clouds lingering tomorrow, mostly cloudy skies. So we will have some peaks of sunshine tomorrow and then into Sunday. It's the weekend. We want sunshine. We want those warmer temperatures, but it's going to be perfect weather. Uh, temperatures below freezing, so everything is going to be uh, sticking around. All that snow is going to be lingering in the area. Trails are going to be looking nice, and we'll see some sunshine all across the Northwoods. Temperatures are pretty mild for this time of year, though. Uh, Florida, of course, they're in the 60s, 70s, some 80s earlier today, and all that warmer air was starting to rise. We did see some 40s, 50s even in Illinois earlier today, so that is well above the average for this time of year. Even New York City was in on some 40s and some 50s earlier today. They've actually had a very mild winter this, so, this season so far. They're actually going to break a record. They have not seen their first snowfall yet this year and it looks like they're going to continue to be on that dry uh, spell kind of like us we are going to be in a pretty dry weather pattern the next several days not much accumulation of snowfall will be uh, possible temperatures are starting to cool off right now we're hovering at around 20 degrees all across the north woods a couple of teens will be popping up very very shortly our average high should be hovering at around 22 this time of year like in 1908 over 110 years ago 51 degrees. This snow would pretty much be gone if we had some 50s or some warmer temperatures at that. We will have some warmer temperatures, but not quite as warm as 50s. We're looking at above average temperatures in the 20s as our seven day outlook brought to you by Northwoods Furniture and Mattress does show a couple chances of flurries Tuesday into Wednesday. Dana Jessica. Thanks, Conrad. The 60th World Championship Snowmobile Derby in Eagle River was in day one of action today. Racers from different countries gathered to compete for a spot in the top 10 final on Sunday. For the second year, the Derby is racing with Formula 3 class sleds, which is different from other tournaments. Mike Van Dolders from Toronto hasn't been in action here for nine years. He says there's a lot on his mind and he races this weekend. Ride safe, ride smart. The final's a really long race, so you just got to kind of use your head. A lot of strategy and uh, yeah, keep the sled in one piece too. Zach Kerfendahl normally races cross country but wanted to give this event a try. He's an Eagle River native who grew up watching the racers as a kid after school. It'll be fun. There'll be a lot of people that I grew up with around and I've never got to race in Eagle River. We're always on the road so uh, that part will be fun to, to see people that you grow up with and, and show them the racing aspect right in your hometown. The new class of sleds is attracting more racers this year, but it's presented its challenges to many of them. Friday Night Lights Thunder kicks off tonight. The championship runs through the weekend with the final event being Sunday at 3 p.m. Today marks three years since the first COVID-19 case was officially confirmed in the U.S. It was diagnosed just north of Seattle on January 20th, 2020. The patient was a man in his 30s who had recently returned from Wuhan, China, where the virus first appeared in 2019. The case was announced to the public the next day. Later, studies found evidence that the virus was in the U.S. weeks before the first case was officially confirmed. The U.S. has reported 102 million cases of COVID, more than any other country. Google has announced it's cutting 12,000 jobs from its workforce. The tech giant CEO sent an email to employees Friday confirming the move, saying the layoff inside the U.S. would begin immediately. Google's offering employees 16 weeks of severance pay, plus two weeks for each additional year they've been with the company. Today's move is in line with other big tech companies that have announced layoffs recently amid fears of upcoming financial difficulties. CNBC reported Wednesday that Google was deferring a portion of employees' year-end bonus checks until March or April of this year. Meanwhile, yesterday, Amazon began laying off 18,000 employees, while Microsoft announced plans to cut 10,000 jobs from its workforce. We're nearing one year since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Today, representatives from more than 50 countries gathered at an air base in Germany to talk about Ukraine's needs. Ukraine has desperately been asking for more weapons, and now the U.S. is delivering more firepower. The Pentagon announcing a new military aid package that includes air defense systems and a sizable fleet of armored vehicles. American Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin promised the U.S. will support Ukraine for as long as it takes. This is a crucial moment. Russia is regrouping 
recruiting and trying to re-equip. This is not a moment to slow down. You are going to read it's the It's a time to dig deeper. Another storyline from this meeting, the U.S. and other allies were not able to persuade Germany to give tanks to Ukraine, but that matter will be discussed again in the future. Some television sets are so iconic that you can almost picture them perfectly. And for people who lived through the 90s, that includes a few apartments in New York City. Coming up after the break, we'll see why you can say hello, Newman, just like Jerry Seinfeld. Northwoods Firearms in Crandon, we sell anything freedom. Firearms, ammunition, parts and accessories. We buy, sell and trade all types of firearms. We specialize in custom built rifles and fully equipped set up hunting rifles. Silencer shop powered dealer with kiosk, factory trained and certified Seracone applicator. We handle all types of firearms transfers as well as NFA weapon deals. Our focus is on you and delivering one of a kind products. Embrace your freedom at Northwoods Firearms in Crandon. It's hard trying to live up to a successful dad. It's awesome Maya never had to deal with that. Tonight, everyone's got daddy issues. The fact that I was a screw-up makes me the perfect dad. All new Lopez versus Lopez. Tonight on NBC. When I was 15 years old, things changed just like that. Guys, I just went through a growth spurt. I am arresting you for providing alcohol to minors. But I'm a minor. <laughs> so you are, buddy. New Young Rock. Tonight on NBC. There's no telling what the next Wisconsin Lottery Scratch Game will bring. It's Scratch of the Day. This $3 game really shakes things up. If your shake matches the shake needed for that same day, you could win up to $30,000. Instant Scratch Games from the Wisconsin Lottery. Odds are you'll like them. News Watch 12's Dan Hagen, Jessica Jukic, and meteorologist Jeff Weller bring you the news and weather of the North Woods. Alongside the News Watch 12 team, they are committed to the community and ensuring the local stories make headlines. The News Watch 12 team works hard to deliver the most important news from where you live, as well as local weather reports. Watch Dan, Jessica, and Jeff weeknights on WJFW NBC 12. Meals on Wheels serves over 200 homebound individuals in Oneida County. They have around 40 drivers, but could use some more. Meals on Wheels delivers food daily to people in Rhinelander, Monaco, Woodruff, Nokomis, Three Lakes, and more towns in Oneida County. Volunteers not only make sure people have a hot, nutritious meal, it's also an important safety check for individuals often living alone. Reach out to the ADRC to volunteer, and it could be as short as one hour every week. And if you don't want to drive, volunteers are needed in the kitchen as well. Libraries are more than just for books nowadays. Many people rely on libraries for connection, whether that's to the Internet or with other community members. The Anago Public Library had 40,000 visitors in 2022, and they're hoping for even more in 2023. They are starting a new marketing campaign in advance of Valentine's Day called Tell Your Library Love Story. They're looking for personal stories. To learn more, you can go to Anago Public Library's website. Fans of Seinfeld and Friends can now stay in the show's famous apartments, sort of. An Ohio couple have created a sitcom-themed Airbnb they come equipped with realistic remakes of Jerry Seinfeld's apartment and Monica Geller's apartment. More than three months of work that took the creators to seven different states, exploring thrift stores, antique shops, Facebook Marketplace, and Craigslist is come to fruition. I want people to sort of have that nostalgic, oh, I remember when, or I remember that, or I was doing that at that time. So it's like a feeling, and it, I think it'll be unique uh, to every person, but in, in essence, just sort of taking you back to a time and place. You can start booking the Cincinnati area Airbnbs on April 1st. They start at $175 a night. The couple say they are working on a Golden Girls themed Airbnb that should be ready later this year. He's cute, he's tough, and he's really old. This Chihuahua mix named Spike has recently been given the title of oldest living dog according to according to the Guinness World Records. He was certified in December to have been born at least 23 years ago. Guinness says he weighs just under 13 pounds. Spike's owner says she found him 
about 14 years ago in a parking lot. She says she named him after the big ferocious dog named Spike from Tom and Jerry's cartoons. Spike is nearly blind and hard of hearing, but his owner says he still enjoys spending time with animals on their farm and the people he knows. We'll be back with one final check of the forecast. Northwoods Accents, located in Mercer, features a wide variety of high-quality, rustic, and contemporary furniture, all made in Wisconsin. Complete your patio or deck with maintenance-free outdoor furniture. View our best craft living room sets. Denali throws and beddings to warm the chilly evenings. All products have year-round low prices with no sales pressure. The owner is available to assist you with any questions. Stop by Northwoods Accents, 5079 U.S. Highway 51 in Mercer. Your personal information gets exposed so often, you might as well be hanging in a museum. Everyday activities like online shopping, banking, and even data breaches may expose your information and make it dangerously easy to have your identity stolen. No wonder there's a new victim every three seconds. Someone stole my information and tried to buy a car in my name. Felt really devastating, frightened, because I had no control. And the ways identity thieves can steal and use your information are constantly evolving. Someone used my information to open up bank accounts in my name. It was terrifying, not knowing what was out there and what had been opened. Watching your accounts or monitoring your credit may not be enough, but protecting your identity can be easy with LifeLock, a leader in identity theft protection. LifeLock monitors threats to your identity, and if an issue is detected, sends you an alert. It was a big yes or a big no button. I clicked, that's not me, and LifeLock took it from there. If you are a victim of identity theft, a dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it. If something happens, you have somebody fighting for you. I don't know what I would have done without my restoration specialist. And you'll be covered by the LifeLock Million Dollar Protection Package, including reimbursement for stolen funds, personal expenses, and coverage for lawyers and experts if needed. With the Million Dollar Protection Package, I know LifeLock has me covered. It can be dangerously easy to steal your identity, but now it's easy to help protect yourself. I realize identity theft can happen to anybody, so that's why I signed up for LifeLock. Join the millions of people already protected by LifeLock and for a limited time save 25% with promo code 25TV. LifeLock. Identity theft protection starts here. Call 1-800-951-7218. Or go to lifelock.com slash 25TV and use promo code 25TV to save 25% on your first year of identity theft protection. Enroll now. What you're about to see is a Channel 12 News exclusive. His name is Nutty the Squirrel and he's three years old. How about that? That squirrel can water ski. Look at him wow, go. Wow, that is so funny. Definitely no water skiing right now, guys. Mm -hmm. Everything's all frozen up. But we could go skiing, you know, in the snow. Uh, we do have 16 inches of snow on the ground right now. So that is definitely favorable for a lot of skiing and not water skiing at that. Uh, we still have several months to water sports.